Welcome, class, to a workshop on Coach Joe Rules. In this lesson, we will review Coach Joe Rule number 42, which states, Know when to test or mock external dependencies. From the childhood pick-a-number game, here's a simple method to get a valid input from the player. The player is prompted for a keyboard input. An initial result is held. If the input is valid, the result is updated. If the input is not valid, an error message is displayed. The final result is returned. Here is the supporting test. Given the object under test, when the getValidInput method is called, then the expected result is 5. If we run the test, it never completes. There is an external dependency waiting for a person to type something into the keyboard, which will never happen. Caution should be exercised when unit testing against external dependencies. Remember, a unit test should prove a specific unit of code works. It should be very fast, and it should be deterministic. The test should produce the same result every time with no code changes. In most cases, testing an external dependency like the keyboard input, file system, database, or web service is not the point of the test. Here is a typical class with one responsibility. It has private properties, one or more constructors and methods, some public, and some private. Like with all applications, this class will need to interact with other classes that perform different responsibilities. There are many possibilities, but here are a few related to external dependencies. Maybe a file system, database, web service, and like the previous example, an input prompt. It is common practice to inject this external dependency into the class via the constructor or setter. Creating a new dependency inside the class is frowned upon, and we'll cover this in the next section. The purpose of a unit test is to test a specific unit of code, typically one of the public methods. This method has a specific responsibility, maybe something like a calculation, a conditional decision, or returning a lookup from a dictionary or a map. Often there is a value provided by the dependency needed in the unit of code. The point is to test the unit of code, not test the result of the dependency. Since some dependencies can be slow, may not produce a consistent result, or require setup and or cleanup, an alternative approach should be considered. Hmm, movie stars don't perform their own stunts, they use a lookalike stunt double. What if we don't actually call the real dependency, but instead use a lookalike or a test double. If this method needs a value from the dependency, the lookalike dependency would be injected into the constructor and pretend to perform the action needed by the test. Because of the dependency inversion principle, our class will not know the difference. By controlling the output of the mock dependency to quickly return a specific result, we can force the unit of code to test our specific use case. Now the test will run very fast locally and on the deployment server. It will also be deterministic or behave the same after every test run. Normally, creating your own test double takes very little effort. The real dependency will implement an interface. The test double will implement the same interface. With the use of dependency injection, the production code will use or inject the real dependency. The test code will use the test double. Most languages have mocking libraries that easily perform the same task. Feel free to use either approach. There can be two types of dependencies in your project class, explicit and implicit. Explicit dependencies are injected as arguments into the constructor or setter method. This is dependency injection. Here is an example. This is a private property with an interface as the data type. The constructor accepts this data type and assigns it to the property. Later, other methods of the class can use this dependency. The D in solid stands for dependency inversion principle, which states, high-level objects should not depend on low-level implementation. Both should depend on abstractions. Review Coach Joe rule number one for more information. Implicit dependencies are not injected into the class, they are created by the class.
Creating the dependency inside the class is frowned upon and will cause many downstream problems. It is breaking the D in solid. Changes to the dependency class may require changes to this class. Replacing the dependency with another will require changes to this class. Testing can become more difficult, if not impossible. Don't make the mistake of writing a decision to use the real dependency or a test double. Don't do this. Since you have a choice on the dependency type, I strongly encourage the use of explicit dependencies whenever possible. Working with many developers over the years, the exact meaning of mock, stub, spy, and fake has always produced a different answer. The term test double and mock have been the most consistently understood terms to replace a code dependency for testing purposes. There are many test doubles to choose from. Let's review a few common ones with a working example. A dummy is a dependency our class under test depends on, but is never used by our unit of code being tested. In this example, the logger dependency is required by the constructor. The unit of code being tested never uses this object. The real logger class has a log method that formats the output to include today's date, time, the provided message, and possibly more things. All of this may not be needed for the current test. Instead, a dummy test double only needs to implement the interface and methods. The log method does not need to do anything to support the test. A stub is a dependency that only returns predefined output. In the opening example, the keyboard input is needed, but the implicit dependency is making testing difficult. A better solution would be to place the keyboard input into its own class that implements an interface. After a little cleanup, now the keyboard dependency is injected into the class. This code will work. For testing, a stub could be created that implements the interface. The getKeyboardInput method will return a predefined value, 5. The original test would not run, but after this little change, the test now passes. A spy is a dependency that is similar to a half dummy or stub, but it also keeps track of internal state information needed by the test. Imagine we are testing a method that sends a confirmation email. The actual email dependency contains a void method. Nothing is returned. The use case test doesn't care if the actual email is sent. It only needs to know that the send email confirmation method will be called once with a specific email address. The spy object can contain private properties to track internal activity. Here we record how many times the method is called, and the last email address passed to the method. Many other internal state items could be tracked. Inside the send email confirmation method, these values are updated. Later, the test could call getter methods to verify the expected internal state. With any luck, the previous test doubles will account for 99% of your testing needs. However, desperate times may call for desperate measures. Let's continue. To be clear, test double and mock are generic terms for testing dependencies. To add to the confusion, there is a specific test double called a mock. A mock dependency is used to observe indirect inputs, control outputs, and make sure specific expectations are met. There is no implementation logic inside the dependency. There is logic to verify the dependency was used or called properly by the test. It's like a dummy, stub, and spy all wrapped together. If you and your team have a good mock example, please share a comment down below to assist others. Here is a simple example to help explain a mock dependency. Let's say the class under test needs to call a method from a dependency. This method accepts a data object used to make a web service call to get weather data. It will return a response object with any success or failures. A valid request will include a zip code or, as an alternative, a city and state. Let's replace the real dependency with a mock that contains a small amount of code to validate the inputs. The mock does not care if the zip code is real or not. It just needs to be a non-null and non-empty string value to be considered valid. If there is no zip code, 
then the city and state provided should be a non-null and non-empty string value. Again, the mock doesn't care if the city and state are real or not. When a zip code is provided, return a stub value including a successful HTTP status. With no zip code, but a city and state was provided, return the same stub value and successful HTTP status. Only when no zip code or valid city and state are provided will the mock return a different stubbed value indicating an unsuccessful HTTP status and error message. The purpose of the test with a mock dependency is to verify a proper request will return a successful response. It will also verify that an improper request will return an unsuccessful response. The primary reason for using a mock is to validate the inputs with a small amount of code and return a stubbed response. A fake dependency is a simplified working implementation of the real dependency. It is not a dummy, stub, or spy. The working code has been dumbed down to support testing needs, but is unsuitable for production. I have never needed to write a fake object. If you and your team have a good fake example, please share a comment down below to assist others. Adding to the prior weather service example, let's say tests are required to prove data from the weather service dependency returns proper values. Calling a database with 40,000 plus zip codes and ever-changing weather conditions is unrealistic. Instead, let's replace the real dependency with a fake that has an in-memory database of 50 zip codes and static weather conditions. A fair amount of implementation code will be needed to support the use cases needed for these tests. The request object will need to be validated as before. There will need to be a query lookup to verify the provided request data is found inside the in-memory database. If found, the stored value will be returned. If not found, an error response will be returned. As I mentioned, the fake dependency is a simplified working implementation of the real dependency. It is dumbed down and unsuitable for production. No spies. The response is not stubbed. It is looked up. I challenge you to utilize test doubles when the external dependency is not the main point of the unit test. Leave a comment down below with your language and mocking strategy. Look for other helpful Coach Joe videos. Remember, future senior developers, make it work, prove it works, then make it better. Ready? Break!